Okay, perfect. Just making sure it's started and working. Can everybody hear me? Uh, it's great to see you. Um, so my name is Maitha. I'm a junior right now in the College of Arts and Sciences. I'm studying biology and I'm really excited to be your crisis director for the African Apartheid Committee. And so I'm just going to go over a little bit about crisis just to start off. So what differentiates crisis um, from GA and ECOSOC is that a crisis committee simulates a situation in the past that was a large crisis and needed maybe an emergency meeting. Um, it can be past events, it can be fictional events, um, such as like we've had Pirates of the Caribbean in the past. Um, and so one huge thing to remember about crisis committees like ours is that, um, so in GA and ECOSOC, it's a lot of debate and you're having a lot of um, like slow paced talking resolutions and such. And in crisis, the point is that it's a really fast paced committee and you want to come to a consensus and decision in the fastest way possible. And so the objective even more here is to work really constructively and collaboratively with the rest of your, oh, can you hear me now? So the point is to be really constructive and work in a really fast paced sense and kind of come to a consensus quicker than GA and ECOSOC committees. Um, and so I guess let's go over a little bit, oh, video is faster than the audio. Okay. Let me know if there's any more logistical problems with the video and I can try and fix that. But in the meantime, if you have any questions, feel free to type it into the chat and I'll try my best to answer them. Can you hear me now? Is it louder? Okay, so keep keeping on the thread of crisis committees. So just a general overview, a little bit louder. It's not working. Hmm. Keep letting me know through the chat if I'm not loud enough or it's not working for you, and I'll try my best to help it help you. Okay. Um, and so a crisis committee like ours, we're going to be. What's going to happen is uh, the crisis staff, and I'm the crisis director, so I'll be heading to staff. We will periodically interrupt your committee with a crisis event that's related to what's being discussed. And so once this crisis event is um, conveyed to you all, you will be expected to factor this crisis into your own policy and factor in what's happening now to what you've already decided on or how the debate's going. And so you will still be debating what courses of action your committee should take overall. And you will be, we'll be working very in tandem with the other crisis committee members. But because of these periodic crisis updates, like you may have to be very flexible. And um, that's what makes it so fast paced and dynamic. Um, and so upon arriving to the committee, you will choose which part of the crisis you want to address first, and then begin debate using your position papers as the initial sources of discussion. And so debate will flow from this initial topic that you all decide on first, and then um, you'll be integrating the first crisis event when it comes and integrate the ensuing crisis events as well. And so another thing that really differentiates crisis committees is that instead of resolutions or working papers, you will be writing directives within the committees. And these directives are put onto little notes conveying the decisions and courses of action that your committee is going to suggest. And so um, another differentiation between these directives and normal, I guess, position papers um, or working papers is that these directives will be written by one individual or a group of individuals or the committee as a whole. And in order to pass a directive, you will require a simple majority vote. So there are three kinds of directives. One is an action order, and that's kind of directing uh, a troops 
uh, or agencies or an individual to take an action um, within the authority of the committee. So, for example, if I were um, Steve Jobs in a crisis committee, um, I could write a directive to my secretary saying um, for them to, uh, or, okay, suppose I was a president of a country, I could send a directive to my um, like a chief general and ask them to deploy troops, for example. Um, okay, another type of directive is a communique, which is used to communicate with foreign governments or your own national government or just to individuals outside the committee. So this is especially relevant for our committee because we are um, South African apartheid, so we will be talking to um, other uh, governments, other nations, and uh, we have a lot of impact for um, probably talking to different diplomats. And so that will be used for you pretty often. Um, and then the last one is a press release, which is used to reveal information to the public. So if there's some large um, is decision made that by you as an individual, then you can convey that information to like an entire country at once by having a press release and revealing this information publicly. Um, one interesting thing about crisis committee is that there's no set parliamentary procedure and it's up to the chair how the, the direction will flow and how the committee will flow. Um, oh, you know, like a further elaboration on this. Okay. Um, so this is similar to, instead of an action, it's either an action order or a means of communication. So for this means of communication, you can just say, um, for example, I'm going back to this president of a country. So if I were the president of a country and I would like to speak with um, or set up a meeting to discuss um, an attack on ISIS with um, the government of Syria, then I would be able to send a direct message, essentially, yeah, a private press release to this government and they would, uh, it's assumed that they would talk um, amongst themselves all the gov important necessary government officials, it goes to them. And then the crisis committee um, in like the crisis staff will send you back a response from that government. Does that make it more clear? Um, so you, you would also be getting responses back from crisis staff every time you send one of these directives saying whether it's feasible or whether it actually occurred or a, they would um, take the role of the person that you are trying to communicate with. For example, for this communique, um, you would if you're addressing it to a certain other person within another country's official uh, government, then they would respond as if they were that person and agree, disagree, or tell you their views on what next to do. Okay, perfect. Um, and so just going over a little bit more about, um, I guess, parliamentary procedure that is actually relevant to crisis committees, at any point in time you can um, have, just one second, Okay, so first of all, there are points, and so points can be made by delegates in between speeches, and only a point of personal privilege can um, interrupt a speaker. So these points aren't really relevant for crisis. I think most chairs of crisis committees will be saying things like, um, it's kind of like a free-flowing debate more so than like you have to make, um, you have to like, necessarily go through the typical like points speakers list 
motions for moderated and unmoderated caucuses. So wait to see what on the actual day of the beginning of the conference. Oh, Prashik, this is a session only for crisis. Well, it's not only for crisis committees, but it's I'll only be speaking about crisis committees. So if you um, would like to, yeah. So if you would like to learn more about them, you can stay. But otherwise, it probably isn't useful. Okay. Um, hmm. Yeah, I would say like the video is not really as important as the audio for Vishal and I'm okay. So I would say just like turn off the video and just like um, it's more useful just to listen. I'm not going to be using any visual diagrams or anything. Uh, other committees don't have crises, so um, so they do have their topic could be a crisis topic, but what is different about the crisis committees is that you'll be constantly getting crisis updates from the staff that will say things like um, a region of this country has just been bombed, and so that would be your crisis, and you would get updates on that throughout or you would get like little tidbits of information as time passes versus um, for example the General Assembly GA committee will just have one topic in the very beginning and that's what you will talk about and you'll kind of direct how that goes but in crisis it's very dynamic and it's happening in real time so there would be um, uh, updates that would be happening for example like oh like 10 minutes ago um, this president was assassinated like that would be an example of a crisis topic while you're already dealing with the larger topic of what to do in a particular situation or emergency. Does that make more sense? Okay, so does anybody have, does anyone really have a good understanding of what um, a crisis committee is already? Like, do you? all have experience being in one before. Okay. Um, is there a name for the procedure followed by Isle Monk so we can read up on it? Um, yes, so it's called parliamentary procedure. And if you just, I guess, in search on the internet for parliamentary procedure, um, an outline, it can tell you um, exactly what we mean by that. And uh, so th that's the source for that. But really in the crisis committee, it's like not really um, that relevant because as I said before, the chair really decides once you enter the committee, what's gonna be kept in from parliamentary procedure and what's going to, or like how they expect the discussion to go. Um, do crisis committees only have crisis? Yes, so they only focus on these really specific emergency situations and um, the ensuing crisis updates that will keep coming in. They can, um, they can be, um, they're usually all emergency situations or something like usually bad that has just happened that you have to factor in when you're thinking about what to do in the long run. Okay, Faraz said, I've got a fair idea of how a crisis committee progresses. However, the crisis I've done before were when I was acting as a delegate of a particular country. Oh, the difference introduced when we're only acting as characters. Okay, so the difference is that, um, sh sure, when you're, um, I guess, a delegate of a country, then you are focused on that particular country's like interests, and you're not really having your own personal interest. When you're in this kind of crisis committee, where it's a simulated character situation, then you have to think about how to best embody your person that you're acting as. So for example, um, I was in a part of a crisis committee called Tech Tycoons. And for that, I was um, Steve Jobs. And so I would try to embody the best interests of 
Apple at the time. And most of my directives or my points of discussion were based upon how I can best, not only best fix the problem that was presented to us at first, but also how I could best help Apple and help myself move forward. And so um, that's the real difference in from when you're just a delegate of a country, because at that point, you just want to do what's best for the country, not really, you don't have any selfish motives or you don't have any interpersonal connections. So Steve Jobs, for example, could make interpersonal connections with, um, or has maybe a vendetta against the CEO of Microsoft or somebody else. And so you have to think about how your person would act in the situation, not just how you would act if you were in the like country, just a normal person in the country. It's a little bit different. Um, let me go over a little bit about, um, is there any, what particular topics would you all like to hear about? Or do you have any particular questions? Because I think if you all have a good understanding of what a crisis committee is, then you're well on your way. But this is a good chance for you to ask any questions that you have that I haven't answered. And if not, I'll keep talking about um, the background guide especially, and so tailor it a little bit more to this particular committee. Okay, elaboration of the committee agenda. Let me do that for you, just a moment. Okay, so for our committee, especially, um, just like the, the elaboration of the committee agenda. So essentially you had a letter um, explaining what exactly your committee's purpose is. And so Nelson Mandela um, is now in a prison, prison like island situation. And so he is out of commission for um, for the rest of the crisis committee, but what he's asking you to do is, um, I guess, so you had been sentenced to years of prison, you have been beaten, you have been, um, been a victim of the apartheid regime, and he's essentially having a call to action, so, um, basically saying what strategy to do after you have left prison, how to best take back the country, how to have get obtain freedom. Um, so right now you're all, I guess, in prison. And it's very difficult for you to do anything. So I guess the simulation is that you're all in this crisis room and that's simulating that you're all in a prison type setting where you cannot really leave or talk to people other than through these messages and directives. So you can call upon people that you know from anyone that you know from the past. You can call upon other people and you will expect that they will respond to you and be able to communicate freely with you.
Okay, other people have questions. Oh, okay, so the password for the background guide, let me type that in and so that you can follow along. Okay, do you see the password? Okay, and just going other the other questions I got, how are action orders made and unmoderated causes? So there aren't really action orders in the crisis committee, it's just directives. And so um, I guess your, your chair can tell you exactly what they want when the time comes. Sorry, I don't have a better answer, but when I was chairing a crisis committee, I just said, uh, just raise your placard at any point and just say, um, like, can we have a unmoderated caucus for X amount of time or, um, point of personal privilege? Can I go to the bathroom? Things like that. You can say at any time. Um, hopefully that is more clear. You can make points of, uh, point of information as well, um, question to whoever had last spoken. There's no, there's no uh, real speakers list, um, so it's just more free-flowing, just raise your placard to speak. Um, but this will all, you can ask these questions to your chair specifically, which will be Risha, and so on the day of the con first day of, for the first committee, you will be asking all her these questions and she can decide what she best likes in terms of how the debate will flow. But I think generally if you want to have an unmoderated caucus or moderated caucus, then just like during any time during this free-flowing debate, you can raise your placard and motion for either one of these. Okay. Um, do we need to submit position papers? Yes, yeah, so when you come in to start, you will probably need a position paper. Um, you will definitely need to kind of at least come in with a position paper saying what you as your role in this committee, what your initial thoughts are on how to solve the problem. But um, obviously this was, this is just, the purpose of this is just to initiate the initial debate. Once you get more, um, updates from the crisis staff and once you are within the debate already and, and already um, like have a flow of debate then you will be able to change and shift your position but the position paper is just for your initial um, thoughts about the committee. Is crisis committee an important source for all the committees? It's very different from the other um, types of committees so if you're not in crisis it's probably not relevant to you right now for this webinar. Um, I guess we're not breaking out of jail then. Our only power is yes. Yes. So it's it's directives for what you would like to do when you're free. But think of yourself as like a mastermind within jail. You can ask other people to do things. Um, I wouldn't say it's 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 delayed. Like you would you can only decide what you're going to do later. You can do a lot of things right now from jail. You just physically cannot do them. So you can say. Um, you can write a letter to your secretary and say, tell blah, blah, blah to um, deploy troops to this area and fight these people. That can all happen from when you're in jail. You're still really um, in charge of everything. You can have a lot of things done. It's just that you cannot physically say, I'm going to go travel to this area and do this thing. You can talk to all the same people from jail through messages. You can still... Um, uh, yeah, you can convey your thoughts and you can get other people to do actions for you. What is a position paper? Um, okay, let me see if I can find you a good summary.
Okay, so position paper could be, um, yeah, so you will definitely be having to come in with a position paper written. You'll get more information about the position papers in the coming days um, as an actual solidified um, like rule and, and examples and things like that, but just a sample of it. Um, it would probably be uh, one or two pages long. You will just be talking about um, the your your particular character or your particular nation if you're a delegate of a nation that will be um, just like your initial thoughts about it based on what you've read in the background guide and just based on yeah based on what you thought from reading the background guide what you particularly think um, your course of action will be throughout the committee or what you want to initially talk about or initially do that's just the position paper uh, yeah, you should have already been assigned your characters. You will be pr uh, very specific characters within this. You're not just um, a member of X dele uh, delegation. Okay, so you said the letter on the committee page had a mention of the fact that you shall not be allowed to converse to your best abilities because the prison guards will be trying to stop us. So how exactly will that work? So, um, so for example, I as crisis director, if you try and send a letter saying, break me out of prison to um, another powerful friend that you have outside of the committee, then I can respond back with a letter saying, the prison guard confiscated your letter and you were not able to get this message out. You will not be able to be broken out of jail and now you will have like a punishment within the jail and not be able to send messages for five hours because um, you attempted to break out of jail and your message was intercepted so if you have like things like that will be um, will be said I guess with the prison guards being a barrier Okay, so, so I think going more on about the characters, um, Nelson Mandela will be your crisis committee chair, so that will be Risha, and she's going to be um, trying to embody Nelson in, um, in as much as she knows about him based on history, and so I think that's the difference between this committee versus a generic committee with the specific characters, that you will be acting as historically accurate as your person is. So you would not choose, you would try and think about what they would want to do from their motives, their incentives. Um, okay, and so because also because you're all currently prisoners and this committee means that you're in the jail, so Risha will be telling you what exactly she wants in terms of um, like how you're supposed to behave within the committee, how you should communicate, Maybe, um, yeah, maybe it would, it would be different than normal crisis committees, but also more fun because this is a really unique and fun kind of setting where you all get to play characters and really act as though you are that character. Um, yeah, and so as prisoners, with a prison guard censoring and reading your correspondence, I'll be the prison guard, I guess, so... It also would behoove, behoove you to kind of phrase your directives and your um, communiques to tailor it to a more um, kind of, if you're more diplomatic about how the way you speak or you cannot like actively um, use like rude terminology towards the prison guards or the fact that you're imprisoned right now because the prison guard will probably be upset because of that and may foil your plans or not just not 
uh, convey your directive to the intended person. How fast will time progress in the committee? So that's a that's a good question. Um, so time will be in in real time. So one minute here will be one minute in um, in this situation. But between committees, I guess it will could be however um, several days is what we're going to assume. Like we're going to assume though that. It, although it's in real time, these actions that are that you are asking for outside the committee, those those can happen much faster. Um, it's really up to the crisis director. So I could say something like, um, I could bring in a crisis update and say, so it has been three days, and there has been this event occurring within those three days that has completely thrown everything into turmoil. Um, a, a major leader outside of this committee could have become imprisoned or could have been killed or um, w the fights could have broken out, riots could have broken out. Things like that could occur um, at any point during the committee. And you're assuming that it is like the hour that you're spent, you're, but you're not waiting hours and days to get responses back from these people. That's why it's kind of like difficult to tell you how much time is really passing so you if you need to um, communicate with somebody like and they're really far away or like it's going to take a long time for them to respond then you probably won't be get a response back um, instantly it'll probably be like 10 15 minutes into the committee until for you to get your response but that could correlate to days um, outside of the committee it's just that it's really hard to say like how exactly long your time frame will be, but think if if it's like there's no like time zone differences, there's no um, like mobilizing troops, for example, could take like three minutes in the committee setting when they could take like days, weeks outside of the committee. Okay, do we have any other questions? I guess the best way to prepare for this committee would be one, reading the background guide very well and understanding, I guess I'm here to tell you like understanding how the committee will, will operate. So um, so you, you can't really openly defy your prison guards because the first time that happened forming the soccer league, um, so that was, that was good because um, I guess it started this impetus of change in South Africa um, while so you can do things like that and say that you can even send out notes from this committee saying okay the the delegates all formed a coalition and defied all the prison guards in XYZ form how will that in, like and then send it out as a press release and for example, and then that could have provided inspiration and hope for the other people involved in the apartheid who aren't in this, who aren't imprisoned in Robben Island. Um, okay, so you'll be acting as John Nankudu. Can you give you a brief overview of the kinds of actions you could be taking? Okay. Um, Okay, so John was a um, guerrilla, army officer, and politician. So commander of the forces of the People's Liberation Army um, when the armed struggle of independence began. So I guess his personality is one of radical action. He's a guerrilla um, and an army officer. So what you do have access to are a lot of troops and people who are willing to rally behind you. 
So when you send out your crisis directives, then you could send them out to um, your second in command of your army or um, second of command of your guerrilla operations and, and ask them to do some sort of radical action. They have access to weapons. They have access to um, large groups of people who are your followers. So you could contact them and use those people to do actions outside of the committee. So you could be, seems like your character is one that will be taking a lot of like the radical actions and uh, the more combative actions rather than diplomacy necessarily. So I think that's the kind of work you can be focused on, like creating quick, quick change um, in response to these things. But make sure you remember that um, it isn't necessarily doing what's smart at is what you think is smart it's what doing what your character thinks is smart and so um, the people's liberation army um, army like commander of the forces will be taking like a lot of these rash um, maybe not rash but taking a lot of radical violent action and wouldn't be advocating for things like um, like peaceful deliberation or peaceful um, negotiation you you should be I, I guess I would expect your character to be um, focusing more on the more radical action side of things um, Bravo cutie it says okay you already have your characters assigned to you if you don't please um, email the Isle Monk India's staff chief of staff and she will let you know um, more about if you didn't get the get the email to figure out what your character is Yeah, you can contact the sec gen Anna Ranchich, um, or you can contact, or I think it should have already been sent to you, but if you didn't get it in your email, then you should contact the sec gen. So you have a network of contacts, and it's very good to talk to um, people that your characters know, people who they have been historically shown to be good friends with, whether they're in other countries. It could honestly be anybody that your character had known in the past. Um, it's all about reaching through your networks of that each of your characters has. So if one of your characters um, did something big for uh, a large a really Im important force or person then you can use that as leverage for example in one of your directives say remember in uh, this year um, this month I um, helped you for your country so it I'm asking for you to do this favor for me so it's all about working with people and kind of um, it's using using your networks to get things done because you personally are impaired as a prisoner in on this island so what you can do is do a lot of things um, by moving through other people outside of this prison but remember that within the prison you can also do um, things that inspire change outside of it for example this first act of defiance soccer league was a symbolic event that sparked a lot of change and, and hope in other people and so doing things like that um, you can send out a press release or communique to uh, your secretary or somebody else and say um, or a friend say that in this prison we decided that we we're gonna go on a like hunger strike um, and that inspired change outside of it by people becoming upset that these important leaders are having to go through a hunger strike um, for their country and so then that could spark a crisis update for example could come in and say um, there's been huge amounts of mobilization and rebellion because of this act. Uh, a directive is like a resolution without preamps. Um, no, so I guess a, a directive is not really a resolution at all. A directive is any, there's three types. One is this communique, which is you, it's 
directives are just notes or letters, memos, um, emails, that type of thing. And so you, um, I guess, you can send a directive to a specific person or you can send it to a general public. So a directive is more, I would say, a message rather than a resolution. Think of a directive as just, yeah, uh, an official kind of message that you send out to, if it's, it's more of a resolution if it's sent to a government type entity, but if you're just sending it to, um, like you can send a directive to your mom, for example, if you're, um, so there's one committee where I was a Illuminati, it was called Illuminati, and there was, um, I think one member of it was Beyonce, so she sent a directive to her mom at one point during the committee. So it's not really a resolution, I would say. It's more like just you can, uh, you, a directive can be just like questions to these people outside the committee. It could be, um, I want you to do X, Y, Z action outside of the committee. Um, it can be asking them for more information. Um, or asking them what occurred out after as a follow-up to an action that you asked for. So and when I was, um, uh, suppose you're in a committee that's uh, about Indian independence, and then um, you, you're Gandhi, and you sent out a, but you're currently imprisoned, you sent out a note asking about how the effects of the salt march were, for example, or you ask whether there was any follow-up or you ask what was the result of a particular strike or a march. You can ask these questions or you can make them happen as well by saying, um, uh, I want there to be a planned rebellion on this day, this time, with this amount of people. And if that occurred, you can ask for follow-up on how that went remotely even though you weren't actually there because you're currently imprisoned according to this committee's um, kind of like rules. So can you use these examples for MUN crisis? I would say, okay, I guess, which examples do you mean, Vishal, Rajiv? You can, you can use, these are all actually from crisis committees, the examples that I'm giving. So you can use these and base yours off, base like actions you would take off of this, but it's really about being creative and, and thinking of what you can do in your particular situation. Okay, I think we only have like four minutes left, so let me know any last questions that you have um, that I can try and clarify. Thank you for being so patient with the all the different um, lags in the video and the sound. Um, really appreciate your patience and for your good questions. And I'm very excited to meet all of you on um, during the conference. I think you guys are a great bunch and you're asking great questions and I think it'll be a great conference. like the attacks okay um so do you mean that the attacks oh yeah you can you can use these attacks as a example for what you would do that you can always have um like you can always have violent action taken on your behalf even if you're not necessarily doing it um if it's a like crisis committee especially, you're fighting for a uh, revolution here to free a country, that's really big. So there's going to be a lot of violence or a lot of like attacks that, like I mentioned that, I think I mentioned for like Indian independence and um, uh, we also had an ISIS committee. So all of those will obviously entail these kind of like attacks on either a country, a location, a city. We, oh, there, for example, um, an attack that could be made is 
um, deploy X amount of troops um, or like this like guerrilla force and go and occupy a particular city. So that could be an example of a real attack that could occur in, in life and can definitely be used in the crisis committee. The most important thing is to have, um, I think the most important thing is to just keep, keep it realistic, but also you can be creative and you can test the limits of, of what you can do. So don't say ridiculous things like, oh, um, drop a nuclear bomb on, on, on this nation. Like that's not possible. And the job, my job as crisis director is to respond to your notes with saying whether it's feasible or not feasible. But I wouldn't worry about that too much. Just try and try and make things that are relevant, that are feasible. And more often than not, the crisis director will um, like these kind of bold actions and emergency type actions and keep propelling those forward and telling you whether it's okay to like, ask for something outrageous but not too outrageous. Like if you, if you want to like drop a nuclear bomb, for example, that's outrageous and will not occur. The crisis director will say, how are you going to obtain this nuclear bomb? Like this is not relevant. But if you say something like occupy the city and uh, seize it with X amount of forces, like that is very realistic and um, that's probably doable. Also like holding someone for ransom, um, that's very feasible, possible. Uh, anything in the scope of what can actually occur in, in a revolution type setting, you should go for that. Um, okay, I think we're out of time, but thank you so much again. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what amazing ideas you have in store for the committee. And I will see you all very shortly.